to make sure they're in melee range. And that thing killed my pet. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Big Ton Plays on the Vox server for Live EverQuest. So I just wanted to log in here, start a recording for a little bit of an update. I made it to level 6 on my guys. I'm in the little uh, Spirali cave that's inside Crescent Reach here. Gonna just get a few more kills and ding level 7. And then I'll probably go ahead and call it an episode, but I got the UIs all set up. The target resisted. Changing uh, the recording style. If you preferred the other style, leave a comment down below and let me know that you would rather see all three windows or would do you prefer to see the full window and have it switch like when I switch. So, depending on how you guys like it, just let me know which one to use, and I'll use that one. A few little tweaks that I still need to do. A couple of windows that are, need to have their opacity adjusted. I'm going to ding level 7 here, and then more than likely I'm going to run off to another zone. So I think I might go to the Field of Bone, fight there for a few levels, like a level or two. But, I don't know. I'm going to probably do a little bit of research just kind of get an idea of where I should, where I, not necessarily where I should go, but a place that I could go and have it be the right level and whatnot. So I had a nice person walk by and give me skin like nature and chloroplast. So I've been kind of just rushing along here, just beating the stuffing out of this stuff. Like on my P2002 videos, I pretty much play everybody as a melee class because that's kind of what you're stuck doing. It's a little different on live nowadays, though, because they have the out-of-combat regeneration, and you get spells every level now, so it's... Regrowth wore off. You start to be your class a lot more early than you do on, like, uh, emulated server. So as you can see, there's some stuff that pops up on the screen that's not inside the game. I'll see if something will pop up before this guy dies. No, nothing popped up. But if you pay attention, you can see that there's stuff popping up. That's the Gina program. By recording the window in full screen like this, or maybe it'll capture that that pop-up thing there. So that's regen wearing off on everybody. That's why I keep saying regrowth wore off. It wasn't regrowth. It was actually chloroplast. But I I'm using an uh, Gina triggers from when I used to play a long time ago on the live server. They're actually kind of old triggers that I just haven't modified yet. Classic fizzle. Yeah, I've watched a, quite a few videos. Oh, there's level 7. So, did everybody get level 7? No, they did not. One more kill for those guys. Dragon Scale Sliver here. So I roughly figured out how to use this advanced loot window now. 
I know this is lore, and I can't remember if I have it or not. Yep. Okay, so this dude needs to never roll on it. This dude can greed on it, which he already has. And this guy already has it, so he'll never roll on it. And then I just set it to auto ask. I'm going to adjust the opacity. I didn't want to do this on camera, but it's not that big a deal just to quickly adjust it. But I have it set up so it only pops up if new loot. Like loot the window hasn't seen yet. But usually it's not even on the screen. So one more kill ought to do it. The target resisted. Yeah. If you're wondering how I'm switching between the windows. If you play in the windowed mode and you have two windows open, you can usually just alt-tab. So I got a lot of skill-ups just now because I just leveled up on him, so obviously you're getting skill-ups because they were maxed before. Anyway, as I was saying, usually you would just alt-tab between the windows, but I'm using uh, WinEQ, which lets you play with, uh, EverQuest in a window. It like, forces EverQuest to be in a window. And by doing that, it allows you to use macros inside the program itself that makes that windowed thing happen. So to switch windows, it's Alt-1, Alt-2, Alt-3. It's obviously customizable, but Alt-1, 2, and 3 are easy for me to press. So Now this guy is taking a beating. Calm down, Ichigo. Calm down. So there you can see the Invenom Bolt Timer. That was just on the screen there. So you can customize the duration of those based on what's, you know, what you want to happen. So it tracked a Sporling has been poisoned. When the combat log reported that, Gina Triggers saw that in the log and then did its you know, did its magic by displaying that timer that I set up. So it's just a way of micromanaging your spells. I use it because I primarily play EverQuest in a boxing situation. And as I progress, you'll start to see, because I'm going to basically show how I used to play, because I didn't record that in the past, but I used to run around and do uh, there's a specific quest line that becomes available. Uh, I think I want to say like the first quest of the quest line starts in like the I think low 70. It might be in the 60s, but I think it's in the low 70s, and it results in gear that is very comparable to the like heroic gear that you would get, or like maybe like roughly the same equivalent as the Defiant gear. I actually think it's a tiny bit better than the Defiant gear, but obviously it's a quest and you, you know, you're killing enemies, so you're getting a lot of experience. It's not just a standard quest like you would expect. It's actually more of an achievement. It's actually where the quest is located. It's located in the EverQuest Achievements tab. So... By completing the achievement that, that's there, you get rewarded with equipment. You actually get a, every item slot and a main hand a, as well as an offhand item. I think it's a shield. And the cool thing is they have a... There's like a tier 2 version of some of the items. But unfortunately, some of those items are actually raid content. So unless you have somebody that's really high level that can, like, escort you through the raid, you're kind of limited on that particular step. That's some of the Tier 2 stuff. It, uh, I think one of them is, like, a, a really nice one-hand blunt for, a, for a, a Wisdom Caster. All 
All right, I think I'm done with these spores. And Oh, no, they're still yellow. I'll go ahead and kill a couple more, and then I'll close out the video. Oh, I might need to meditate there for a second. We'll be all right. The target resisted. And I should start changing to the enchanter first to get that passion on there so that my slow doesn't get resisted as often. Typically what I'll do is I'll hit Alt-1, Alt-2, Alt-3. So the enchanter is actually Alt-3, so I should go 3-2-1. But you know, if you've ever played a shaman, one of the first things you try to do is get it slowed, you know, so... It's not that big a deal, because like I said, I got skin like nature on, so... At this current stage, I actually think these things could not kill me. Yeah, somebody walked by and just gave everybody skin skin like nature. Pretty good. I have characters on oh, Erola C Mar slash the nameless server, but I didn't I don't have any character slots available to make oh, a new character, God. so you would have you know, I would have had to show you content of like characters that were eighty five plus and I feel like Showing you how I get to the 85 plus would be more of an adventure than just showing you what I do at 85 plus. Uh, I've been using this primarily as platinum. I could obviously keep it for a plate class user, but I think I'm going to limit myself to three characters. That way, if I run across a random player, I have you know, space available that they could, you know, I could, we could group up so I don't have to be like, oh, well, I only have room for one person, even though there's two of you, you know, so I want to keep it available. Because right now, I can have a full group with three mercenaries. So, you know, I can boot out mercenaries to let real players play if, if we, you know, if that ever comes across that. And I've seen a couple of people fighting in uh, lower level stuff. I mean, it was higher level from you know a level one point of view but i think i saw people asking to group up in like polluted caverns and stuff like that so go ahead and set always greed on this stuff these mushrooms i could have swore i said to not up not loot oh see it says greed right there is that the enchanter So yeah, these guys are still being yellow. Go ahead and med for a second. Bonkai. Yeah, there's a... If you mouse over your skills on live now, it shows that there's actually a cooldown when you mouse over it. Pretty sure there's a... Uh, I think it's, I want to say it's slash timer. You can do a social or a macro that uses the command slash timer. And you can make it to where, like, you have one of those, like, evade macros where you click on it and it, like, turns your attack off, pickpockets, hides, and then turns your attack back on. You can actually get that timer to display a little countdown for like whatever you want it to keep track of the cooldowns so like your hide timer or the pickpocket timer so you could actually have a timer on your macro because usually a macro just you know when you click on it it just displays the timer or the you know just the button it doesn't show like how it's read it out right there is that a word read it out uh, slightly the red bar that's fading there. So we'll go ahead and stand these guys up. And yeah, I made the macro so I can run around and then I just hit follow. Auto targets. I'll give you a peek on that. So it's just target frecro. To compensate for lag, I have a slight pause in there. 
and then it just types the follow command, which could be abbreviated to just slash FOL. And that same thing. I have it in the same spot, too. Remember, last video I was talking about I like to keep the UIs the same because technically I could put that on a, a hotkey, like, you know, six or something like that. So I could switch to Big Ton, hit six, quickly switch to Manello and hit six, and then everybody would follow. Right now I'm just manually clicking it because it's not that important. Go ahead and do a few more kills, and then we'll wrap it up. Again, with the uh, needing to change to the oop, almost slowed the uh, guy over there. But because they're on auto follow, I can move them around to make sure they're in melee range. And that thing killed my pet. Little butthead. Got that offense Bonkai. skill up. Wondering if those skill ups is the damage popping up. Let's see if I can land this. Oh yep, see? Right there in the middle of the screen you saw that ten that popped up. That was the non melee from my life tap. There it is again. Ooh. Is that shaman boots? Oh no, it's Necromancer stuff. So we'll go ahead and uh, need roll on that with this guy and need roll on that and then we'll just have Shaman beat on it. Alright, so adjust the opacity. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, just put comments down there. I can make, you know, custom videos just specifically to answer vi uh, questions, or I could just simply answer in the comments. So, depends on what the question is, because I might be able to physically show you how to do something if you have a question. Close. That. Actually, I need to go ahead and roll on that. Close that out. Gonna go ahead and head out. Oh, they gave me Spirit of Wolf too. All right, thanks for watching. If you like the video, click the like button. If you have any suggestions or comments, leave them down below. And check the description for follow me on social media. I got a Facebook page set up for my channel, so I post updates on, you know, upcoming videos or planned projects, stuff like that. So you can check it out on my Facebook. And if you wanted to help financially, you can actually donate over on my Patreon page. There will be a link in the description as well. So until next time, I'll see you guys later.